Hello everyone, this is DJ. This is Marco. And Michal. And this is CG Talks, the podcast where CG guys talk about CG. And we're beginning the new year with a fresh new episode. So last time we uh, summed up the 2020, the year mm-hmm. all of us loved and cherished so much. And right now we're kind of like not looking over our shoulders back but trying to look into the future so today's topic will be what to expect of 2021 yeah in 3d of course in cg and all yeah. stuff related yeah well i i aside from 3d actually it was very close to 3d because uh i've seen this uh, boston dynamics video of dancing robots and Right now, I realize that I mean it's it's chilling, like it's it's really oh, close to become crazy. These are the same guys you said uh, made a robot um, that was doing factory work, and then they were harassing it just to see how much it, how how focused it could stay. Right? Yeah, yeah, I see. Oh, it. yeah, it's it's it's. Yeah, but finally, he 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 walks out from the warehouse. He slams the door, so you know he quits the job and says, you know, <laughs> and that's, fucking that's jerks. T- that's when he started dancing, right? Just, <laughs> yeah, decided to pursue a more uh, creative. Yeah, endeavor. I mean, it's, he he always wanted to dance. Yeah, but it, it, machines I mean, of passions too. I've seen it, and the, this robot has better moves than I have. So he's all, I'm already, you know, uh, um, you know, obsolete as a human yeah. on this oh, field. Man, Losing this. I mean, do you really dance? Because like, yeah. chair has better of moves co- than I have. <laughs> I mean so so yeah it 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 really dances and um of course you know you need to see it but at some point i thought is this possible to make such a um you know like a um animated robot and uh, compose it with the place so it looks exactly like that and i thought yeah already at this point if at this point i don't know i mean i know this is a real video Oof. because this is boston dynamics but I could actually, you could, you you could pull it off with uh, VFX and 3D mm-hmm. rendering, and no problem. Make, yeah, yeah, because this is like this technical shape, and you just have the HDRI and uh, uh, proper lighting and and some post production, and but but it was real. So basically, it looked like some kind of um, it could be uh, it could be a video test video <coughs> of Boston Dynamics, but also also it could be a test video of Silicon Graphics. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but i was thinking that right now if i was let's say 18 and if i was more into the mathematics than i was i would do everything to work in boston dynamics because this is the more sci-fi job you can have oh man like, like you know uh i have a my uh, my friend's uh kid mm-hmm. is uh um he's like uh oh sorry or maybe like someone's nephew um he he has a scholarship in in his high school because of his work in robotics apparently there are there are robotics leagues now <laughs> i mean like back like in my time like uh like you were i don't know there was like the you could be one of the the like you were you were one of the band kids you were one of the, the mm-hmm. athletes or like maybe one of the martial arts dudes but but now like they're you know yeah there are robotics leagues like they they get exempted from class because they have a robotics tournament to practice for wow and they train by by refining their code and then they wow. go to they compete at, in different uh countries in in the world, and then they they have their robots, and they have the robots have to perform these tasks, and they're evaluated based on uh, the robot's performance and the elegance of their code. And that's wow. pretty rad. That's like, <laughs> yeah, it's so, like uh, that's the first time I felt like, oh shit, the times have have truly passed me by. Like actually, I'm now, I'm now on my way to becoming a fossil. <laughs> It's or you can or, or you can go like one step uh, above that in, in terms of virtuality <laughs> you know just like building your yeah, yeah. robots your robots procedurally in blender for example and then doing them 
just in virtual space and dancing, just like Andrew mentioned, right? Yep. So yeah. Instead of building yeah. a real robot, you just build a virtual robot and then composite it into reality or augmented yeah. reality or whatever. You know, there's a yeah. whole world of possibilities there for you, Marco. Yeah. No, need, I, I, no need I to give up. I was kidding, <laughs> man. I was kidding, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I know. But thanks, thanks uh, for the for the pep talk. Um, but yeah, like uh, I I just mean that it's cool. It's cool. It's cool to see like you know like things are like technology now is just really it's there. Like these are things that in the eighties, like I would watch movies of and then be like, ah oh, man, I'm never gonna see that. But now it's like, it's there. You know what's crazy about this? Like these robots are, um, well, they are very close to be uh, military robots in my opinion. Like <laughs> you just have to change the change the camera on the top of it. Like they can scan places and stuff like that. And you just put their uh, uh, gun and that's it. But um, the crazy stuff is that I, I I look at these robots dancing, and there were two of them. Like, oh, by the way, they can completely, you know, unsaddle and move move away all the and sync and similar bands bands because they can the 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 synced dance is perfect. So yeah. you get five of them, and you know you have the, the you have the the voice band. But I was thinking, okay, they look very complicated. This is like very, very, you know, cutting edge of technology and programming. But I realized once this design is done of this robot, it can be very cheaply produced on mass scale. This is not, this is like, okay, they have two. Wow. Well, if they have two and then, then and it works the way it should, you can make a million of them. <laughs> Like very quickly, so, yeah. So yes, this is that. Th- it's like they are not uh, much. I think they are not much more difficult to copy than than a car or um or a bike, right? Despite their mm-hmm. cutting edge uh, technology. So not sure. So. Not sure about that. It, it is. Uh, is it so easy, you know, to produce this kind of a robot like that? That, that advanced one, like. It would be like producing like high end, uh, high end, you know, arm army equipment. It's not like producing millions, right? Probably yeah, I mean, like, 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 uh, like jet planes quality. or whatever. Quality, but but, but on the yeah. other hand, this is the, it's like you know they have all those parts which other machines Star- have. Star Wars just... coming, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> By the way, uh, going back to CG. Um, I recently, by the, I, I recently saw in uh, uh, Saturday Night Live one of the one of the episodes. There was a deep fake of Donald Trump and Melania Trump in the sketch. They 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 were deep faked, and they were that was that was you know mm, make make me uneasy watching it because it was almost perfect. So actually, it would look like real Donald Trump was in the sketch. But also the second thing is that recently uh, online, I think on Twitter, uh, it's like the news from like like last several days. There was a, somebody published um, Donald Trump, uh, some kind of you know like public statement, and it was also deep deep fake. So mm-hmm. so uh, uh, you know for 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 production like uh snl or a movie it has to be you know very good quality but for people who you know don't really want to question it and maybe you know can see it like a part of it between one and second thing in some little window or you know stuff like that it's 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 so easy to now to manipulate the opinion the public opinion with with these deep fakes it's uh, I can I can imagine people who whose uh, you know like criticism is not the top notch, and they really want to believe some stuff, and they maybe are not one hundred percent into, uh, into uh, some conspiracy critical terrorists. thinking. Yeah, but but let's say they are a little bit in, into this, this this part, and they can they are not very careful in what they see and checking it. And let's say seeing it between one and on another thing on some on some you know like uh, on their Facebook or whatever wh- and wherever, and it's it's very it, it would be very easy to push some 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 
deep lie into people's heads and so, they would so, be... so generally you predict the 2021 to be the master uh, master lie coming into life right some uh, super deep, not not very bright future uh, i hope us. not but <laughs> but but this is this is you know like in the context of what's happened recently this deep fake thing is uh it's like when te- technology really aligned and technology and the possibilities like this negative mm-hmm. ones in this one thing really aligned with the times and the situation yeah but i'm right. thinking that might might be you know that might be a signal for for i'm not sure if it will be right but uh you know th- because you know having a um, having a misinformation like spread it was already possible with the uh, traditional you know media you could you know just produce a a lie and uh, you know spread it throughout the the web with with just photos and stuff like now right now deep fakes are just like a more stimulating maybe you know way of convincing people with media I, right uh, I, to to there's all misinformation right but uh, yeah. that might be also you know a, a kind of like a warning sign for people not to just take for granted whatever they see online because it's yeah, I mean, it's always to take problem, it with right? a grain of salt yeah yeah besides like, besides like conversely you know like uh let's say Donald Trump like gets caught red-handed uh doing something stupid like uh i don't know you know like like like, let's say let's say because he had a lot of like sexual harassment allegations at some point in his in his life right so today that was deep fake yeah like today like like there could be like footage of him like actually i don't know grabbing somebody's butt and then he can just say you know deep fake yeah people are like oh well yeah yeah it could be you know like it, it, Actually, it also the, obscures the truth it doesn't yeah it doesn't only propagate like already untruth. already already people don't live in corona and you know like you don't need deep fakes for people to actually some people to say that everything is false everything whatever you see is false and there is no difference between one thing and another like there's that the generalization that the truth is also false so it's it's basically you is everything is subject subject I, I don't say i don't say in such an intellectual way I don't, there are people who just start to believe this kind of they have this attitude in not very intellectual way just very you know simple way like uh, basically everybody's lying so there's no truth so so basically it's rather about our our um our uh, um i don't know how to call it, how our group finally yeah because and besides like i think you know, I think even postmodernism is kind of intellectually yeah. frowned upon now. So yeah, oh, no matter yeah. where it comes from, yeah, it, it's a bit yeah, no, intellectually. It's it is it is it is that this postmodernist stuff. Like I think Jordan Peterson was talking about this also. But I think it's like I I, I talk to people, recently, even close people to mine, and somebody got too much into into be you know like very anti left and too much into right without thinking. Mm, and I don't say like left or right is better, but in this particular uh, example. And at some point, I had a impression that you know, like there's no um, grade, there's no, there's uh, no um, choice in between truth and false with that, with that, um, because it doesn't matter really. And it's like, and it's like in in real people. It's not like this intellectual thing, like some somebody writes some intellectual work about it, but people in their everyday lives start to think like that. So, so this I'm, I'm uh, uh, and it's 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 uh, you know it's no like uh, yeah like, like a sweep like a sweep like a blanket statement without any real like dissemination, right? Like yeah. So finally, people stop caring about actually say you know what this is not right or you know what this is not true. And this is it, it, it. There is like this, like believing that there is some kind of final truth, like if somebody did something or not. And some people start to think, well, actually, there is not, no, n- not, n- not such thing. So just let, let's you know, let's take, let's <laughs> take care about us, our hurt or whatever. Mm-hmm. But it's, uh, 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 but but I th- I think this is, uh, you know, like the, the this present days like last years with trump showed that you don't have to use such advanced technology to fool people to lie to them you can just 
stand up and just keep lying, like with words. So this is a very old school way. But hmm. but I think that this is like adding to the general confusion of 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 people. Like this yeah. is not destabilizing the reality, and you know, it's. Uh, I think people like to believe some stuff and like to have, like, even lying to themselves or or just just want to believe that this is true or or this is not true. So this deep fake of Donald Trump saying something or another guy in future, I'm sure, politician or whatever saying something or not saying something, then 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 it's it's, it's really giving a lot of okay now you you really can believe it without any any like uh, remorse <laughs> that you didn't check yeah. it <laughs> like okay this is more than you need to to really root for for this guy because or against this guy so it 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 i think this this is opening you know like for example um in times of uh, communism because uh, me and and dj we come from poland so i remember some some i was born in, born in 79 so my childhood was in communism and uh my dad's whole almost whole life was in communism my grandfather's most of this, his life was also in communism so so i know how it worked and i was interested in that you know, like stor- his history and stuff like that so so there was some at some point there was a new technology and there was like the whole um whole technology and methodology of lying uh, in for example in photography in film like for example in times of stalin in soviet union it was normal that it, very similar to the to this year 1986 or 1984 i don't remember this this uh, the 84. title of this 84 yes yeah. so mm-hmm. so this guy was working on changing all the time the the news so so they had actually the technology which is now you know from our point of view is is primitive but they had a technology of changing the photos and cutting away people who are not uh, who 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 at this point were not you know welcome to some you know they killed somebody or they just this created this fake fake uh, fake court uh trial and then you know they didn't like that this guy is, was next to the stalin 20 years ago in some situation and they were constantly changing them these photos they were they were updated to the to the modern situation to the to the current situation politically who's in who's you know in disgrace or in grace so i can imagine that that if this is uh if this is go it can be going this way also with deep fakes and this kind of this kind of technologies i think yeah. that's so so kind uh, of like is- the communications uh, media technology that is supposed to bring people closer together you know more informed it kind of like has this backfire of doing the opposite right like making yeah, people close I, in but their, i think that's i think the face are uh, there are no more negatives than positive actually i know what i wanted to say exactly when you use i mean you can you know lie to people in many ways disinform them but with deep fakes it's, it's almost unrecoverable it's uh you how how you will uh how you will um convince a person who really saw that on on video and it looks like it really happened with real people it doesn't look like a movie that it didn't happen but that this is deep fake how will you convince such a person because you no. will have to go into even if you would show this person a process of of manufacturing that mm-hmm. i i re- i mean how much we could understand it if you saw that we, if we saw that but nobody would really understand it i mean my father my 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 brother even not even people would and my grandma totally not so they would you you you, you can't you can't really straighten the, the 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 truth because you know there are no it's it's uh, it's uh, it's not possible to recover I think it's, it goes so deeply in, into the head that people really saw it. That's it. Well, I, yeah, but I, again, I think I, I think I think we can we can sum it up by saying, Happy New always Year think critically 
yeah dear yeah. listeners a public and I'm service thinking, announcement I'm, I'm from thinking that the that guys for, at garage farm yeah but, but for anyway the ho- hope, for the hopes uh, for for this year for example like i i would really really hope to get some kind of a meeting like like a conference that we missed so much in 2020 but as we talked before with andrew we kind of like most of the conferences are already kind of like um, announced as being online so like mm-hmm. the same as 2021 probably not yet coming out of the pandemic work workflow sort of so i would really hope that at least till the end of the year like some events would start to become face to face meetings maybe maybe in smaller groups or whatever uh, i'm not sure but that's that's one of my hopes right for this year just so so tired of this all virtual space right <laughs> i really miss like this real real face-to-face meeting people this is kind of one of my hopes for this year yeah i mean gradually i think that you know like uh, joe rogan makes his podcast all the time because he tests every uh, his guest so you know with this uh, this precaution it's possible so i can imagine that when the vaccination will go further it's uh you know like mm-hmm. you can come to the... i'm pretty i'm pretty hopeful for that like i i, I was uh, i was already uh, like going through the covid thing like luckily it was mild in my case but then uh, i was uh, also visiting one of my relatives in hospital and uh, there was a guy who who unfortunately has lost his uh his relative and he was uh he already told me that he was vaccinated because he's working for the hospital so it already kind mm-hmm. of started here and i think all over the world is slowly starting to happen so some people just went through the uh, disease and uh, yeah just hopefully it will somehow you know diminish in time not, not yeah. all the time spread i think it's going to be a slow process like recovering from this stuff and, and you know finding more and more safe safe bubbles to, mm-hmm. to do something and the more important it is i think the the the, the, the these important ones are going to appear first like maybe some specialistic conference but you know for less people but you know tested and 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 vaccined and okay so we can do this mm, mm, do this uh safely but yeah. um yeah also but, and whether you believe it or not mm-hmm. it's it's probably not a big fake deep fake that uh, Blender 3.0 will arrive. Really? Uh, will arrive. In yeah. 2021. It's it's some, somehow like planned for the middle of the year or so. Because it's like wh- right now it's uh, tw- 2.91 and 2.92 mm-hmm. is prepared for February, I think. And then I think it's just one more release uh, in the tw- 2.9. I, th- I think it will be 2.93. It will be the long term support. Um, I believe, and then 3.0 should launch. So. And so, 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 is it a big revolutionary change uh, in general, or only in number? Is is, is it going to be just a, a another they, release? They or? they announced it as as a new kind of like way of uh, of numbering because up till now Blender was kind of like slowly growing in numbers, and right now it's yeah. turning into a more regular thing. But the 3.0, I think. It will not be such a leap as 20, uh, 2.80, right? Like redesigning mm-hmm. all the interface and stuff, but some crucial things should be already there, like in 3.0, uh, you know, all the coming developments of uh, oh. uh, fitting it into pipelines, like USD mm-hmm. support and stuff like that. Uh, it should be polished up till then. And also some new key key um, ideas should be impl- implemented then like for example the geometry nodes that were already kind of introduced in 2.92 beta so you know introducing the new procedural workflows for right now for geometry and it's planned to grow to a like to the everything nodes project right so no defying everything in blender so 3.0 yeah. probably will be kind of like the launch of this direction in a wider on a wider, wider scale. It's it will not be final, but yeah. I think this this will be the major change from my perspective on the 3.0. Oh. 
it's not so diff- it's not so easy to predict exactly what's going to happen yeah. next year because as i noticed uh, uh, many uh, developers don't really um you know uh don't really uh announce or you know what they are going to add re- yeah really. and the, and the funny thing is that the development companies also like re- release uh, uh software numbered as the year as the future year <laughs> so like you you yeah, have three guess max yeah, twenty twenty one right now, right? <laughs> yeah, but there are also there are also a lot there's also a lot of software that uh seems to have just come out or seems to have just gotten out of its uh like preliminary uh you know phases that can really um, I don't know, I mean I guess it, 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 it can it can provide like a lot of like wishful thinking fuel for for this year. Like one of one of one of these softwares that's really got me excited is um, Animcraft. I don't know if you guys <gasps> have heard of it, but uh, Animcraft yeah, is, uh, they released their one, their like version 1.1 1. 1, uh, just early this month. And it's basically, uh, it's basically, I think it's, it, it's made by developers from China, but it's, it's essentially, 2D. sorry. It's 2D animation, something like. No, no, no. It's, uh-huh. it's, uh, it's, it's like a, um, it's essentially, uh like mixamo with long term support like uh uh-huh. because mixamo is not really um as far as i understand it i don't think adobe is doing anything with it um and that's why it remains free and you know that if you've used it for the past few years you'll 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 see that uh they they haven't really updated any you know the library with any new motions um but so animcraft uh is an alternative but it is paid um, I think like the the cheapest seat you can get apart from educational is like at two hundred dollars a year, but mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it promises to have like a, a a continuously growing library of motion capture data that you can retarget to your mesh, and it looks like it 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 uh, it looks like it's being made to to be accessible to anyone coming from any uh, sort of like software. Um, and can and I think it it seems like it's also able to um, import pre rig characters. So if you know if you've rigged it in Cinema 4D or Unreal or or uh, I think Blender, I'm not mm-hmm. sure. Uh, you know, you it seems like you can you can export the rig with the FBX and then uh, have yeah. like get get back a you know like you'll be able to more easily retarget. Um, mm-hmm. uh, the the motions to an existing but, rig, that but you the, yeah, but this is a kind of like library that they provide, and you use the uh, ready mates from what? Yeah, but but provide. I mean that's it's just that because like there's also I know there's also like alternatives uh, that that allow you to use your own footage, right? Like uh-huh. like yeah, like that, the tutorial you made, yeah. But yeah. but uh, it's also that's what I wanted to mention. The, the yeah, deep motion, and I think yeah, yeah. one one other company is doing like similar research yeah. and products. Yeah. So. But but yeah, like I think that I mean, cause cause whether, uh, like like it, there is something to be said also about having, uh, motion like, motion, uh, like if you wanted to make your character do a backflip and still survive to, to to actually target that animation um to your character, like if you've had no previous gymnastics just pra- experience, just practice, <laughs> yeah, practice or you can practice master. for years. <laughs> And and, and hope you don't with... break any, you know. But let's say you're, let's say you're you're hit, you're pushing sixty, and you still, and you and you wanna, you know, you want like your character to backflip. I think that's that's bringing like, us to to the nifty, you know, uh, I, like what area bio, of of bio, uh, new, bio year, new year's resolution cybernetic <laughs> implants or yeah, no, but no, but anyway, the, but the point is like it's it just I just wanted to say that it's it it seems like um, motion capture is is something that. Uh, is really going to pervade the market, um, and like soon, if not, I wouldn't be surprised if 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 like you could, if you had so if you had many alternatives out there, um, by the end or or mid twenty twenty one or you know or maybe the year after. But since we're since we're talking about like what what to expect for twenty twenty one or what 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 we're excited about, this is one thing, like Animcraft specifically, and also Deep Motion and. Uh, you know, and and software like that, but but the idea that motion capture is becoming is going to be very accessible, um, yeah. even to 
even for you know even even at the like a enthusiast level i guess um that's pretty cool uh yeah yeah and so oh, basically... oh, sorry there's also there's also uh actor core which is another mocap library that also just land uh land sorry that also just launched uh mm-hmm. this month um and it's also a cloud based uh service that allows you to kind of download motion capture clips um and yeah like i th- you know like like i said motion capture that's one thing that's gotten me excited and uh, like as far as cg is concerned you know for for this year like be excited to see what what uh, how these new yeah. services or software they by, by the way andrew price has made uh, the uh, the blender guru has made a podcast episode uh, like doing some forecasts for the, the industry in 2021 Oh, he cool! Was, yeah, he was also like predicting some, you know, technologies to break through into the industry. Like, uh, for example, the, we we talked a lot about these AI algorithms, like machine learning stuff, uh, things like art breeder and and so on. Uh, so, automating processes using mm-hmm. these these new technologies right now. You know, a lot of software yeah. in, introduced these cool things that uh, that just automatically do stuff like tedious stuff for you and a lot of a lot of things but one thing he mentioned also was uh was vr like he was predicting that it might probably at at some level get more accessible as well i'm thinking like it's it's pretty uh, it's pretty inaccessible nowadays like many not not many people really have tools for that because the gear is expensive mm-hmm. yeah and maybe and maybe you know the the benefits are not that obvious and uh, to 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 all people, but uh, what he mentioned was pretty like I've seen that especially for for from concept artists like uh, Jama Jubaev that he he mentioned it's really a game changer for him like to create to quickly pull off things in three D like quick quickly sketched ideas sculpts and stuff. Because it's oh really? Yeah, but why is it so? It's, how much easier it's, it's a, is it? Yeah. Because it's such a better, you know, um, better input device. What he what he he said about about that in in some kind of a podcast on online. Do you mean he's, VR and yeah, and VR, VR gloves? Yeah, go, go, goggles and, and gloves that you use uh, just as a part of your workflow that you set up everything you know in the traditional digital uh, workflow. But when you need to set something up. As a 3D scene, you know, lay out a scene or do something like that's really 3D. Uh, mm-hmm. That's just making things so much easier to input. Because you did he talk about feeling, like sc- you have like the feeling? Did, did he mention like sculpting, for sculpting, example, like yeah, sculpting and modeling things like really? quickly? Because because you can feel you know feel the relations in space mm-hmm. more accurately, right? You, you can you, you are just like inside the scene. For example, he he made an example of of a tree or something like that. If you if you are trying to model that in the traditional way, it's kind of like you you have to look at constantly move your camera, yeah, you right. know, uh, look at many views of of the of the three D space, and it's kind of like it's very artificial. But when you're in the in the VR space, you really like you really feel like you're dealing with a real object or stuff like that. So, um, so we're this thinking... lawn mower guy. Yeah, I'm thinking it's like it's a little bit like going from a mouse, uh, you know, from a mouse to a tablet or stuff like that. But th- when you when you just receive another, you know, a more natural way of of inputting your, you know, your pressure sensitivity, your hand to eye relation and stuff like that. Yeah. So I guess that's cool. But w- w- wouldn't you like be, uh, uh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm trying to imagine like. But of course, this is useless because I've I've never actually tried it. But maybe I should just wait till I try it. But um, because like but you the... like now you sculpt with a with a, with a pen. If you sculpt with a pen, um, like you you are able to still uh kind of. It's not too different. Like when you when you sculpt with clay, like you do you do in a way kind of orbit around your model, and you do have these tools that are pen shaped to help like scrape or in reality. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. but like in VR, you do have the capability to move around in 360. Um, but you're holding these. Don't the controllers? The controllers are kind of like these. They look like handles, right? And then you kind of they're like mm-hmm. joysticks in a way that you you move around with your hand. 
Like I wonder how yeah. I wonder if uh if if it if it took time for for, so Jung, basically, for example, to really yeah, so to, to get the, the hang of because it's it's totally new, right? Like you you don't get to call upon like your previous your familiarity with the pen, for example. Yeah, and, it, your, and this, these are completely new. Like, and it's know. not yet even supported by most softwares, right? It's yeah. like kind of like because on the on the edge still. You only just just uh, you know like pull and uh, push the 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 surface, but you cannot just you know like. Uh, cut out a part of it of it like make little cuts with a little knife stuff, stuff like that i think yes. it, i think it's possible it's really? probably you know it's probably more a, a so- software issue right that's driving it yeah so yeah but i'm not, I'm not sure how, how it's right now because <laughs> i have no experience i just like because if you would relying uh, on his experience gloves then you also have a uh, awareness of how your hand is placed in the space with your tool in 3d Mm-hmm. So it's different, I think that um, that you know when you are really sculpting, and I don't have a lot of uh, experience with that, but I just had mm-hmm. some uh, on on the college in college. So we have these tools, and yeah, you you actually could even sculpt with closed eyes. But I mean, you, more or less, you have you need to have more awareness of, for example. Your, your your imagination of space of your your own body it counts right of your hands because mm-hmm. you you are manipulating with the with this tool in 3d with your own hand and you c- cut out stuff so it's not only looking but also it's uh um uh, if the glove has Tactile? this uh, like if, feeling? If, the, if the gloves have this uh you know these these sensors then you actually move your hand your in in 3d space oh sh- are we there in, in are rela- we there like you could you could you could you could feel like you're holding the virtual object that you're working on is that what uh, you mean I, I don't know if at this point you can do this in this space but but finally i think this is how it oh yeah work, for sure right? that would be a game changer yeah I, I mean even that is a game changer for a huge extent i really I really. Want. <laughs> uh, by the way, there is a, like a market push towards this. It it happens because um, because oh of corona, God. corona, uh, uh, the pandemic. Yeah. Uh, there is uh, much more of virtual reality in, for example, in uh, in real estate because people are trying. I mean, on the marketing, uh, for example, on the marketing. Um, on the marketing uh, level, it's less it's less uh, you know popular because people really would like to see their their, their uh, new houses and flats in, in in reality. Finally, they have to, but you know they can at least look around quickly on uh, how the design looks like or how the the room looks like. But for example, there are virtual uh, you know like when, when when there is some some stage of the some stage of the um of the construction is finished there are engineers who are virtually checking the 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 effect and they are you know, signing that this is this is done well and they can move on so i mean that it's not cg this is uh like camera somebody's walking around with a camera and the person you know w- looks at it on the camera and if maybe with even stereo camera but um also there's much more push towards virtual reality uh, ar- architectural visualization because of the, of this of what's happening right now so i don't know if it's going to go back to to normal or it's going to you know like uh, speed up this development um, uh, to this in this di- direction but um, there is uh, also a market pushing that not only technology uh, going that way so, yeah, and all the all the remote work. Imagine you know having the ability of meeting virtually, but w- with avatars or whatever. Just it's another sci-fi <laughs> idea coming <laughs> to our lives, so so to speak. Probably that. Yeah, yeah that's also a de- like a market demand. For, uh, I imagine. Look how look how quickly we got used to you know Skype calls or stuff like that. You know, using Teams for work. So you don't have to shave to go to work. You can just yeah, sit yeah, in you your 
Pijama. Yeah, because you're because because at work you're a cucumber. <laughs> <laughs> my and your and your office is mate a... is a pizza slice. So. Yeah, your boss my, is a dog. My my boss is such a pig. Uh, really? What? No, no, he's he's literally a pig. <laughs> oh my god! Imagine. <laughs> Anyway. Imagine like you so if you if that tactile like like uh like hand sensor technology happens in VR <laughs> and then there are deep fakes. Like you could oh. even just deep fake like someone you like someone you hate. Like you like that would be like a top selling app. And then you just get to you just get to like put them in the three D space and slap them around. <laughs> I mean I, I'm I'm <laughs> and really feel the, and that's it, like you can beat the shit out of Donald yeah. Trump. <laughs> Devs Future devs, there's your. That's a million dollar app right there. Once <laughs> yeah, their stuff I, I, comes I'm sure. Around. I'm sure that you know, as technology progresses, there also are these quick ideas how to sell it. Like, I mean, YouTube, for example, right? That it, it was not there for ever, for forever. Somebody thought that this this is a very simple idea. Hey, well, let's make a place where we can upload your your videos, and uh, so so somebody is uh, sooner or later creating some kind of idea to how to sell it for everybody everyone like it's first a gadget or uh, something you know for people who are interested so yeah i mean yeah <laughs> well actually i thought that you can you know you can uh you can make your meeting as uh i don't know last supper <laughs> Or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know Hitler and and his team. I know I'm just kidding, but uh, yeah. But this is I think this there's some time toward that. And you know I'm I'm very interested in listening to this stuff and you know looking at this where it's going to go. But I know this is not CG thing that I'm going to say. It's completely not CG thing. But in my head I have this global warming stuff. And for me, it's like a final terminator of of all that stuff. Like this is, yeah, we we will have problems with AI and and fighting robots, uh, as soldiers, and we will have meetings as as you know, sixties uh, Hollywood stars, like you know, you you have a date with 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 uh, Marilyn Monroe uh, in in <laughs> virtual reality. Uh, if will if this is not going to be terminated by global warming, yeah. Sorry for that. I know that this is off topic, but I couldn't help myself. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, no, I was I, I, I was just... gonna say like, like I just suddenly had this idea of uh, like this image of um, like imagine imagine if uh, like robotics is become street level tech. And then every time you see like uh like like gang violence is no longer, you know, like waged by humans. <gasps> they're just like these they're just like these brawls on the streets by like opposing gangs with ro- like of robotics. <laughs> like just cyberpunks or girls. Or, yeah, 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 yeah. Like they're just like but they're they're just, they're just like droids like battling a, you know, like yeah, like a droid mob. So, so I guess we're kind of uh, like scratching the cyberpunk thing that that mm-hmm. were super hyped, like the the game, the game launch, and then there was the yeah the appraisal and also the disappointments and stuff. So uh, I'm wondering about what what is going to be hyped for 2021 and what's going to be really like the thing. And what's what's going to maybe disappoint us? Like, for example, like maybe maybe the global warming will be just will, will not just come as come as Andrew predicted. Yeah, it it it's not going to happen within a year. So yeah, yeah, like, no, I know it's not boiling a prediction. Boiling a hermit or whatever. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's much easier to to know what's going to happen in uh, 2021 in games in this industry because there's like thousands of such videos online mm-hmm. uh, but I, I i know when it comes to our farm i mean it's like i mean it's it's not going to be very original more servers more nodes more supported software in gpu rendering and also you know like for example we have 
this big um, big update, which I'm sure this year is going to finally happen for 3ds Max. We are going to add the Max script workflow in our. Uh, it's from the uh, coding uh, side. We are going to employ the Max script in our scripts, and that will give us a lot of cool uh, uh, opportunity to lo- to add a lot of cool support for a lot of features, plugins and our plugin will work faster and better so this is like we have like a very long list of uh, features requested by customers and our ideas and they're on this list when we have the max, max script workflow so and uh, I, I i'm pretty sure that this is going to happen this year because we've been working for that for last year and a half or longer Ooh, exciting stuff yeah so you know it sounds kind of Vague and abstract, but this is going to unleash the the list of you know this this all these features we were waiting for such a long time. Yeah, um, there are some things that in the Blender world as well, kind of like looming at, on the horizon throughout the twenty twenty, and that will will eventually land in twenty twenty one. Like hype, hype things that already launched, like the the Redshift for Blender, it was already launched, but I think just for the paying customers, no no demo version yet, so it's kind of like sort of a beta. But I'm also watching closely for for Arnold for Blender. Oh. It's it's been kind of hyped throughout the 2020. It's like like it's almost going to release almost almost and <laughs> like there's a, there's a, there's a guy working on a plugin right integrating. Uh, Arnold for Blender, but yeah, I'm pretty sure that you know, finally it will land, right? And uh, also one thing that was uh, in the uh, in the render engine realm, it was uh, announced the the Renderman, so Pixar's Renderman for Blender. Oh, and it was yeah. announced to be released like early 2021. So I'm keeping an eye on it, but still no news uh, of, uh, at this point. But yeah watching for that as well like i'm I'm thinking because cycles is also also getting pretty well developed and there's luxco render that i was checking recently so kind of like the options uh, arrived arrive and you have really plenty to choose from and if and once it uh, once it gets you know integrated with all the all the major softwares around it will just be even more, you know, even easier to to just collaborate with all the others as well in the market. Like if you're a Blender user, it's easier, you know, to switch you know, stuff between between softwares and guys using different software if it's all interchangeable. Like yeah, and also uh, Arnold. When you said about Arnold, I think it's just like another force that will kind of help to suck blender into the professional production hopefully because this is like from what i can see on the farm arnold is mostly used to to some vfx and and very professional production mm-hmm. so so you no know, when you mix blender with arnold it's like at first it's very strange connection from you know you have this free software for mm-hmm. you know enthusiasts everybody can start from scratch and this is completely free and on the other hand, other hand, we have, you have this uh, this paid uh, this paid uh, render engine, which is so professional, used mostly with Maya and you know with very professional VFX, VFX or, or animations, VFX mostly from what I can see. So it's yeah another force that's going to to push Blender to to more professional uh, area. And what guys about your new New York resolutions? Do you have any plans? I will learn this or that this year. <laughs> yeah, I got some things on my mind. Like, I was, I, I'm a little bit, you know, a little bit uh, doubtful on this, you know, idea of of making New Year's resolutions as, as you know, losing weight from from January and stuff like that. Well, it kind of mm-hmm. like rarely works that way, but from my experience, like when I lay out some like some plans for the future, like at least uh, answer myself what I really want to learn or where where I want to head to. If if I verbalize it and maybe write it down or some somehow you mm-hmm. know 
visualize it, it, it kind of becomes a self of self uh, fulfilling prophecy in a way. Mm-hmm. So, um, like for example, I was uh, I was planning to get into animation last year a little bit, and somehow you know between different tasks I, I had the opportunity to to do so step by step so probably w- wanting to continue that that direction this year and also I, I'm really really curious about uh, uh, the non photorealistic re- rendering because uh, I was like all the time being an artist artist struggling just for this uh, for this photoreal you know mm-hmm. direction and that's kind of uh, that's a constant, right? You always strive for for the for the nicer looking photographic images, renders. But uh, but what really you know gets me on is is like getting even more creative. Like I really was was blown away by, for example, by by the Spider Man uh, Sp- into the Spider Verse movie, for example, stuff like that. I really enjoy it, but uh, so I just. I would like to test my, you know, skills in this kind of area somehow. So that's one one my, one of my wishes for for this year. And also, Blender Blender has got the awesome grease pencil tool. So I I was curious if I could make any use of that, you know, that mix that's kind of like unique for Blender, like being able to to mix the uh, the 3D space with with the tools like specifically designed for 2D animation. So Mm-hmm. Yeah. So so. Yeah. I, I actually I thought I, I think I said in one of the rec- uh, recent episodes that my new resource is Substance, but now I found some new software and I had some new ideas and yeah, th- I'm also not doing this kind of resolutions, especially from the point of view of you know like um, you know learn Substance or uh, rather like goals, like more specific goals to go to then you know to to I know master something this bug but I would like to do some quick works not only 3D more often I mean I was thinking about this you know like one quick work a day Instagram challenge but it's not possible with with the amount of work I have mm-hmm. but you know for sure more often for sure and and you know kind of learn how to end the stuff okay this is what it is this is yeah. what how much time i had I how to keep to it focused uh, i just had this problem of of like being excited about a, a lot of online challenge challenges like these like mm-hmm. for example scalp january i tried a few times never really gone through all of it like one one thing i i, I did was uh was th- 36 days of type i almost did all of them once and and in October. I was able to to kind of follow this through, but then I found that this is kind of like, well, it might help you, but it also kind of a, it's also kind of dangerous and just you know do do those challenges for the sake of them, of the challenges, right? It's, I would it's more, do Inktober without I would for, for without for prompts me, or your own prompts, right? Or something. Uh, like that. I would do like one thing a day when it comes to Inktober, mm-hmm. and still and like every time approach to this okay i I want to draw something cool mm-hmm. the October, yes but for example sculpting no it would be yeah. just kind of like grinding like i mean or or yeah. clueless i was like last year way. last year i tried this uh at first i was following the prompts and then i found like i really want to practice sculpting so like having this incentive that, that there's a community of people doing sculpts every day was cool but i thought that well i have the, all those like personal projects lying on my shelf why not just sculpt things out of this list right like mm-hmm. I, I wanted to make my own character that i have some drafts of like 2d sketches of uh, and i wanted to like bring it into 3d so i just quit the prompts and i focused on like learning to sculpt on this on this idea of mine and so like trying to do two things in at once right yeah because that's the way. problem that's the problem that i really have like having too many ideas and yeah, too many things to learn, too many things to do, like projects to, <laughs> that I start and never really pull off completely. That's uh, at least yeah, uh, uh, this personal project, like me having a family as well. Um, mm-hmm. 
a daily work and yeah, yeah, it's hard, it's, to, uh, hard to find time. So so it's it needs some clever exactly yeah clever was, thinking. I recently I realized that too. Like you know you 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 you, you uh, we make uh, tutorials. You uh, I have to learn maybe some new software on the farm, some new feature, whatever. Something's happening, so it's a good way to somehow put like um combine it in a smart way to just you know uh tick several i mean just 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 do several things at one time uh yeah. more powerful way because there's just Sm no time for smart it. smart materials and smart workflows that's what yeah. we need this year yeah so doing doing it procedurally you you need to think about the proper procedure for your yeah. development marco Mm, yeah, uh, well, for me, it's really more of just going back to the basics, uh, like really getting a firm grip on um, just like being able to understand form and uh, like recreate it first in, in 2D and then in and then in in 3D. Um, I mean, I like personally, actually, I, I, I am kind of thinking about uh getting into getting into clay just because it might be a good supplement for for uh sculpting in 3D and sort of like being able to spend time away from the computer and st but still work at uh uh at the fundamentals you know so um yeah like yeah basically it's mm, maybe not Maybe the only the most tan the most concrete uh way I can put it is to just develop uh develop uh like a habit of um sketching as frequently as possible, like ideally on a daily basis, and then also uh supplementing that with uh yeah, just doing sculpts and also studying uh making more like not not worrying too much about creating a final result and instead uh put more focus into like making studies of things mm -hmm. um cuz now i have a really like i've like i've always kind of had this really horrible habit of not using reference you know i mean not because i think that it's uh that it's like i i i i respect like the the importance of you know of of reference and what it can do for your work um but i just i like the idea of sort of just getting getting lost in in the process of what you're doing and just like completely uh like not leaving you know uh that 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 imagined like world weird as it sounds you know like it's like i kind of like to see forms unfold without having to and somehow i just sort of feel like uh when i when i have to refer to like um an anatomy book or or like picture references i get uh like the immersion is broken a little bit um but of course it's you know like it's it's essential like you can't really you can't really just keep uh uh you know making things out of um yeah, you can't just keep making things out of your imagination and expect to improve. So, uh, yeah, like I think I, I really, I, I, I want to build a habit of making as many studies as possible, so that when, when inspiration strikes over a weekend or whatever, and I decide to make either a sketch or a, a sculpt or a, or a, or, or a painting, you know, like uh, at least I can. Um, if I choose not to use reference, at least I'll 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 have uh like my internal library is built is a little more extensive and I I, I could actually kind of improvise enough. Um so that's sort of my resolutions. Cause it's sort of kind of like how uh since since uh, like you both play like we all play guitar here, it's kind of like how you would uh yeah, drill up on your scales or whatever and then so that when you know when the time comes for you to kind of just sit down and improvise on your instrument you can you're more uh you can 
you can conjure up like uh, uh, arrangements yeah. because you know your way around the mm. you, mo- you know you know your way around the the board like yeah so more letters just, in your alphabets so. the, yeah right yeah to just trying to be more um, yeah expanding my expanding my uh, I don't know my lexicon yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm thinking that like this dev- developing of habits is like it's pretty hard but then, then you know I found I found that once I I decided to get back to to drawing after a few years of not really doing it at all after after college and uh it really started with with some geekish you know gear and like I I just bought some you know sketchbooks and uh, a little bit of tools and once once you have a tool and a sketchbook that that really fits you uh somehow you know, it has to be the right one, like the the most uh, the most mobile, right? The the most the, the one that you will be able to carry with you. For example, I I found that the more I the more I have, you know, at hand possibility of 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 drawing, the more I draw because it's you know it's just using every possible. And sometimes I really don't feel like drawing, so it's not not possible. But you know. I just found that it helps really to just use uh, all the in between times, for example, for for a little bit of a drawing, for example. That's really helpful, and I'm thinking that might be, you know, that might be helpful sometimes. You know, uh, I wanted to say um, that, that that you know, buying some gear might sometimes help you, you know, develop a hobby, a, a ha- habit. Like I, I wanted to ask Andrew because you've uh, you've I think uh, invested in a new computer as well right now. Woo. Or, not. or is it like for 2021 it's a new brand brand new fresh start with new gear that you want to play with oh that 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 must feel so good i mean i i i, I think i had one year when uh yeah like i upgraded just as the new year was about to come and it, and it starting the year with like an with you know with a new with a new with an upgrade i mean that's that's great. <laughs> it's a great feeling. Guys, I, I was disconnected for a second. Sorry. Yeah. So I, I mentioned your, your new computer. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's uh, the setup is ready. And this this week I'm going to this week I'm going to get it. So I'm very excited because uh, I just started to play. I, I will tell about this program. It's called Chaotica and it was released the second version was just released so this is a program to create this uh this um um uh the word how it was what was that the the uh these shapes this uh, mathematical shapes and there fractals, are fractals. fractals yes exactly and uh so there are programs like that like mandelbulb but this one is the Chaotica is very cool because i mean it's quite it's like let's say not 3D, but also it's not fully 2D. It's like 2.5, there are 3D effects in there. So, uh, but it, it has a lot of tools, but it gives you much bigger control over what's happening there because you have a viewport with effects where, where, where which you can rotate, move, move around like, like objects. And right now you do it in 2D only, but um, uh, it's out of control. You also have a frame buffer with effects like like post effects like uh, in V-Ray, for example, or Corona. So you can really uh, it's it's much more towards the artistic part. It's not so mathematical, and uh, and also um, you can create animations. And right r- right now there are only uh, there are only some there's there's some kind of you know like uh, like a timeline, and you can create some keyframes and animate all these effects so without much precision but i think this is going to be developed so so yeah i i, I liked it a lot because this is th- that kind of reminds me uh work like playing with art breeder but you you you, you the, all the stuff is more abstract of course you cannot you know uh, influence it with some inputs from from like uh, uh images you you load into that stuff but um 
yeah so 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 i recently started to play around with that and and you can create very nice stuff and also i was thinking about about connecting it to cg to 3d and actually you can for example uh you can't you can't you can't um export the the mesh like recently in mandel both 3d but uh for example you can create some of the nature um uh, phenomena like you know, you know cosmic space it's easy with that so and, uh, and other stuff so so um you can save the images with various uh, um, uh lightness brightness so it's very similar to to uh, you know like, like this bracketing in the in the camera in the photo camera with uh, uh, making photos taking photos in with various expositions so actually you can i think you can do an uh, lighting hdri uh from this uh from this abstract uh works you you can achieve with them so i think this is possible to 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 also employ it into the cg the 3d workflow and I, I started to play around with it because I watched some works in the gallery and they look different. That they don't. You really can can create a stuff which doesn't look like this, um, you know, like this uh, cliche fractals. It's more it really, really you can add some more chaos to that and it looks uh, more uh, like abstract, uh, abstract procedural graphics. 2d with some 3d with some 3d feel to this so yeah recently i i i i, I got stuck on this and i and, and um you know playing around also some learning some of the f features because you have so many of these effects of these mathematical effects or transition transforms and you, uh, that that i i need to i'm checking them to have more control over it you can also you know use like for example, use some uh, so so-called shaders in this for them. Uh, play you can you can for example animate the pal palette and you can change the palette. So you have also some randomness. So you can for example start from when you open you can start from scratch, but also you can start f just generate. So they are called every such a such a scene is called world and it's a good name for it. So uh it generates like for example eight random worlds and some of them are not uh you know some of them are not very interesting what's what's happening there or not interesting at all but in some of them for example instantly i can see something interesting like something mm -hmm. happened there and so we can take it and then you can start to modify towards this effect or look which you like for example but you can also start from scratch but yeah. for that you would need to really learn more about these uh, elements which you add together is similar to Mandelbaum, where you have yeah. these mathematical equations or that's, that's, functions that kind of sounds to me a little bit in the in the way that uh, mitch sinava the mantisa works with blender <laughs> yeah he's, uh, he's creating this convoluted you know modifier stacks with particle systems and stuff and just i think how things go <laughs> I thought exactly about him when I when I when I started to play around with it. I really thought about yeah. him. And and because similar things, similar things I've seen like like these procedural, you know, abstract art artworks like recently published by Fabio Palvelli on his Instagram, and he's been digging into Blender recently. So probably you know he's just playing around with with crazy stuff you can do with procedural textures and geometry in in Blender. So yeah, I, so so. <laughs> right now right now i'm trying to kind of i'm thinking how to how to uh, make it 3d because i have some ideas how to make it 3d maybe not you know, like like um, literally but for example um saving several versions with different with different uh, with different mm -hmm. masks stuff like that to make layers yeah. and maybe between these layers put a real 3d rendered image Mm -hmm. uh with some for example filter in after effects like this is some kind of for example um 
um how it's called uh, the like 3d computer space what I'm, mm-hmm. like i'm trying to 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 find something so so yeah but this is very fun it's uh, similar to art breeder in terms of playing around with it maybe more complicated and you um and uh by the way it's it's uh it's um it's using your gpu both gpu and cpu so i'm waiting for this new computer of mine because i i i i am sure that i will uh, with new computer and lower quality it's a progressive rendering so you can set the 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 noise limit and by the way the the noise limit i mean the noise in these renders is very cool and i was actually thinking that you know uh when you stop rendering at some some lower noise level and you zoom in the noise looks cool it looks like uh, more like a photographic uh, negative film uh, noise it's yeah, a plastic, I felt it's that more way plastic also, yeah. yeah and it, it it it's uh this is how it's uh this is how it um it looks and i was thinking wow what about a render engine or an option in render engine like corona on v-ray where you can actually tick a uh, you know like this this square and have progressive rendering but for example you have photographic noise so you can actually stop it earlier and you have like for example in in uh, in normal photography for example uh, you had this very uh, light sensitive negatives like there was Kodak 2020 uh, ISO and of course it was very uh, you could basically uh, make photos with low lighting but at the expense of a very strong uh, uh, grain but this grain w- looked cool especially if you know how to de- develop it and how to how to make a print so so uh, you, you you could do a very it, there, and also there was i think very high contrast but i mean that's not important but the grain was very plastic and it was like this um like this structure of of your of your uh, that was this your, uh, that your your uh, um, like material which you were using for this photograph, and so it was not something to optimize or it was not something that was just low quality. And I was thinking, what about if the guys who are doing that make such render engines which actually have this feature that the sampling is more the sam- the, the sampling uh, algorithm is creating this progressing grain but it it looks <coughs> cool at any at any point so so i don't know if maybe there are not so many users of that but i can imagine that more that some more abstract work some music videos um some motion graphics would i think do with uh, with a little and actually i can imagine some 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 cool some cool for example arcbis with that um some more maybe cinematic effects of animations i think it'd be cool i don't know how 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 difficult it is to to it to, ma- to make but these guys somehow make it because made it it's not perfectly photographic like but it looks better than just a noise from corona for example right like all rendering engines it's uh, it's it's not just not enough information it looks cool at at many stages so yeah, I'm I'm I, I'm waiting for a new computer, and I I'm sure there's going uh, I will have be able to set it for a real time preview because now I have to wait. So I'm working on a laptop. It happens that I install this one of the laptop, but also because uh, it shows you all the devices that it's using. I'm going to test in our on our desktop server, and if it's going to support multiple cards, I will also ask on the forums. Then great, then great, then then. I can imagine how how cool might be the work with on, on Xestop with eight, ten, eighty Ti cards. So yeah, this is this is what I'm into right now, and this is why I gave up my Substance New York resolution because mm, yeah. I'm more emotionally uh, invested into Kaltika than just making some kind of well, you know, this, real this is, plan. This is That's some kind cool. of like you know entry for for proceduralism in general. So you know. Substance has some general some some features like uh, procedural features, but uh, yeah, Houdini is the way for you. For you. 
<laughs> yeah. Or just wait or just wait until Blender gets procedural all the way. <laughs> Uh, and then and then jump into Blender and you know because because this is using some kind of probably uh, some some general you know fractal uh, fractal equations or, or mm-hmm. stuff like that, that that are available you know mathematical formulas that you could apply to any kind of procedural iterative you know setup I guess if you're if you're fluent with with software like Houdini or Blender or, or something it's just a matter of setting up the yeah but for for now it has like some kind of conjunction of several features which i like one of the mm-hmm. things is that you do it manually so you don't have to really i mean i'm i'm, I'm checking the documentation because i want to understand more uh what those functions functions are doing to be more aware of where i'm going like have some plans like not not only just play around Mm-hmm. The second thing is that you get the effect plastic effect very quickly, so you don't mm-hmm. have to you don't have to quote unquote render it. But not in I'm, this time I'm not don't mean 3D rendering, I mm-hmm. mean like rendering uh, in uh, digital painting like details. You, I really just want to go from the idea to playing around to the final stuff quickly, and it doesn't have to be very very i mean i have a lot of uh photorealistic doesn't have to be photorealistic doesn't have to be just i want to go to the okay i like it created this i like it okay next one and Mm -hmm. and um and also um yeah it's not only mathematical and has a lot of plastic tools so so for example houdini i can imagine that there's a lot of um planning and working with the with the with the these um, tools to finally get some cool effect, I think it's more learning, maybe more grinding even. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, so so um, I just want to maybe um, skip the hack part of 3D and creation yeah. and be more into the the just feeling that I created something that I like. So it it can be abstract, whatever. Uh, that's why this this uh, um, Inktober thing is okay for me because I can sit down and just in you know, 30 minutes paint something that I like or not. And that's that's it. I, I, I had some experience with with ink, so I know that I can something that I enjoy and finally I like the grid to you know just close it and send it, show it, whatever. So yeah, that that that's why I'm that's why I'm. I'm into it right now. Um. Yeah, so I guess we're all creative and hoping for even more creative juices in 2021. Yeah, for sure I will try to do some tutorial (laughs) on our Gash from Net Academy about Kaotika. Yeah, and definitely definitely our service will keep growing uh, in terms of like the, the render farm service just to get, you know, get these rendering worries out of your back and our back as well so we can yeah. focus on what's really fun in 3d so basically uh, unless uh, unless you really enjoy you know listening to the hum of of the air uh, <laughs> the coolers in the computer and watching those little progress. little squares appear <laughs> slowly you like to work w- watch the progress bar and, and buckets but basically yeah. it's all, all about that the farm and from from like um, I realized that I want to be in this creative process from start to end because somehow I kind of you know got distanced from the from it, and it kind of 3D become started to be more and more look like a hack, like a grinding for me. So oh, I th- I thought okay, no, this is not a good direction, and the farm is about this. You you just focus on the creative work, this 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 decisions and this fun or sometimes maybe not fun, but you know the process and then you just upload it and quickly you have the final effect so this is this is about that from the professional point of view there's no other way actually it's uh either you have a farm on on in house or you have a you use us which i recommend very much to at least try we'll see yeah and for the podcast we already uh, yeah we already started preparing for some nice things like 
we ha- we're hoping for more more artist interviews this yeah. year maybe so more artist interviews ho- hopefully some developer interviews some maybe some talking about some software which mm-hmm. is going to uh, develop in s- this way or another some so. ideas are floating around and we're hoping to to get these done for you in 2021 so stick with us and keep rendering yeah happy 2021 guys Yep, have a good year. I hope you all do, really. Uh, Yeah, so I guess we'll see you in the next one. See you guys, bye. See ya, bye. See ya. Stopped recording. Okay, it was nice.